In preparation for our next major thing of study, we're going to begin by talking about interpreting logical statements and also trying to determine if they are true. So we're going to talk about each of these and try to say, what are they saying? The first one says that for all x and for all y, if x plus y is equal to zero, then y is equal to negative x. What is that saying? It's effectively saying that you can solve that given equation by subtracting x to the right hand side. Alternatively, it's saying y equals negative x is a solution to x plus y equals zero. And you can actually make this an even stronger statement. It's not a solution, it's the solution, the only solution. So we're going to write the solution. Why is it saying that? That if and only if it's saying that if y equals negative x, then it is a solution. And if x plus y equals zero, then x equals negative y, then y equals negative x is the solution. So it's saying it both ways. And saying it's the solution implies that inherently in some sense. So this is an English way to express that idea. The next one says that there exists a p, there exists a q, such that two equations, p plus q equals 2, and 2p two minus q equals 10. So this is saying that there's something that solves both of those equations. This is saying that there is, is a solution to a system of equations. This can be uh, proven true if you wanted by solving the first equation for p and then plugging that into the second equation. So then you have 2 times 2 minus q minus 3q equals 10. Keep doing more math and we get 4 minus 2q minus 3q equals 10. Now we need to solve this. We subtract 4 from both sides and combine some like terms. We get minus 5q is equal to 6. q is therefore equal to negative 6 fifths. So math seems to check out, and that seems to be true. We proved it's true by finding them. A there exists statement can be proven true by finding the thing. A for all statement is not so obvious. The top one there, you need to try to figure out how do you prove something about this generic idea of real numbers. Uh, we aren't going to deal with things of that nature for the most part in this class because that's actually a little tedious because you need to say what do you mean by addition, what do you mean by subtraction, and what are these things well defined as, which is surprisingly tedious to do and is not necessarily the focus of what we're interested in here. However, if you take algebra as granted, then of course this is easy, right? If you assume that plus, minus, and equals are all well defined and we know what those things mean, then you could prove this by just doing the algebra, right? You subtract y from both sides and it solves the equation. This last statement looks very obtuse, but it's claiming that the number zero exists is actually what it's doing. So this says that there is an integer such that no matter what you multiply it by, no matter what real number, you get zero. So this is talking about the existence of zero. Existence of zero. And you could find it by just saying, what is x? x is equal to zero. It's a there exists statement. And we know 0 times y, no matter what y is, is equal to 0. So we prove it again by finding an example, because it's a there exists statement. In general, for all statements, you need to find some other way to prove. And if you notice, we didn't prove either for all statement. We don't haven't talked about those techniques. That's going to be the next major topic that we discuss. But for now, we're going to say there exists statements. You can find an example. For all statements, we're going to have to find some more sophisticated way, which is our next major unit of study.